What's up guys, Dylan here from Veteran Aquatics and today I'm going to show you how to make a DIY air pump that doesn't use electricity. This is going to be great in the event that your power goes out, uh, you have to set up an emergency bucket for a fish, anything like that, anything to oxygenate your tank. We are approaching the winter season and with that comes winter storms, comes ice and snow, and sometimes we lose power. Not all of us are fortunate enough or have enough money to go out and buy a generator, so I'm going to show you how to make an emergency air pump using nothing but some five gallon buckets and some air tube. I will see you in a minute. Alright guys, before we actually build this, let's go over everything that I'm going to use in order to build this air pump. So number one, some aquarium safe super glue. Uh, the gel kind from Gorilla Glue works great. Uh, it can be any piece, any thin piece of rubber. I'm just using a rubber kitchen glove because that's what I had. We have a tea splitter for airline tubing. We have uh, an air valve for the airline tubing. A pair of scissors. Uh, some aquarium safe silicone. If you guys don't know, uh, GE silicone number one with no mold inhibitors is the kind of silicone that you can use in your aquarium. We have our aquarium co-op airline tubing. Corey, if you're watching this, reach out. I would love to, to work with the co-op one day. I love what you do. Uh, you could also do this with a hot piece of metal, but I'm going to use a drill. I'm going to use a 332 drill bit and I'm going to use a 732 drill bit in order to make the holes that you're going to see me make. I also have two 5-gallon buckets from Home Depot, as well as the Loctite uh, lids. So it's got to be these kind of lids in order for it to work with a bucket. You can also do this with a two liter, uh, two 2-liter two soda bottles, uh, but I'm using buckets because that's what I have. But it's got this rubber gasket here that makes it waterproof, so that way when you turn the bucket upside down, it doesn't leak water everywhere. So that's all I have, that's all you need, um, and with this, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our 3 30 seconds drill bit, and we're just going to drill a small hole on the top uh, of each one of these bucket lids, and I'll explain why a little bit later. They don't have to be in any particular spot as long as it's in the lid. So next we're going to take our 7 30 seconds drill bit and we're going to drill two holes. We're going to drill one down low. And then we're going to drill another one higher up. And we're going to do that on both buckets. Alright, so now we have two matching sets of holes, and this is where the airline tubing is going to go in. Next, we are going to go ahead, we're actually going to take our glove, okay, and we only need two small pieces of rubber here, so I'm just going to snip the end off. And then make another cut across. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be pretty. And then we're just going to cut it into two pieces. So these two pieces are going to go inside of our lids. So those air holes that we drilled earlier with our 3 30 seconds drill bit um, is going to be the way that air gets sucked into the bucket and allows it to create a siphon. Because the general premise of this uh, type of thing is that it's a siphon. So we're just going to take our piece of rubber, we're going to attach with some super glue. We don't want to cover the hole that we drilled, we want to put this uh, above the hole. So we're going to do this on both. So this way when the bucket's laying down, this is acting as a plug, and when the bucket is standing up, 
This can fall down and allow air to go through the hole that we drilled earlier. So we're going to do that for both buckets. Stick that down and let it dry. So that's it with our bucket lids. We're done with our bucket lids for right now. Set those aside. Next comes the actual bucket. So the way this is going to look, there will be one bucket on bottom and one bucket standing on top like this. All right. So let's go ahead and get our airline tubing going. So you can glue the buckets together, or you can silicone the buckets together if you want to. Uh, for this, I'm not going to. I want to be able to attach them and use them for other things if I need to. Alright, so first we're going to cut a short piece of airline tubing. So this piece of airline tubing, uh, I would say it's about 9 inches, is going to go right here. So this is for water to drain out of and into the bucket that's on the bottom. So I selected the size drill bit that I did because it provides a tight fit uh, without kinking the airline tube. Just feed that into both of these holes. Now we can choose to silicone these or super glue them. Uh, just to make this a little bit faster, I am going to super glue them. However, if I wasn't in a rush, I would probably just silicone them shut. Silicone takes a while to dry, and if you need this in an emergency, you don't have a while for it to dry, so super glue works. Again, make sure it's aquarium safe super glue, like the gel glue from Gorilla Glue, which is what I'm using today. Fun fact, you can also use this to glue plants to driftwood or stones. Let it cure for 24 hours, and then you can go ahead and stick it in your tank, and it won't hurt your fishies. All right, so there's that. Next, we are going to cut a longer piece of airline tubing. So to get your length, go from the top of one bucket to the bottom of the other bucket. Add about two inches for slack. Don't lose your scissors like I did. cut it and we're going to do the same thing again we're going to thread it through these holes so the reason you measure it so when we're pushing this airline tubing through the bucket at the top we want it to go all the way to the bottom to create the back pressure necessary to um, to push the air through the airline and get it pumping into your aquarium so make sure that both airline tubes go all the way to the bottom. Alright, so now that that's in, at the center line of the two buckets, we're going to cut the airline tubing. This is where our little T is going to come into play. Side in the T, the other side, and then we're going to cut a very short piece of tubing to attach the, uh, the airline adjuster to the T nozzle. And then another piece of airline tubing to attach the air stone or sponge filter to the air nozzle. Right, so now the super glue that was on our bucket lids should be about dry, so we can go ahead and attach those to the buckets. So you see how it kind of hangs down when it's on the top? That's exactly what we want. Because that little air hole that we drilled earlier 
is going to allow air to pass through the bucket lid to create the siphon. So this bucket is going to end up being our bottom bucket, so we want to make sure the lid's on there nice and tight, so that way we don't leak water all over the place. And again, you can choose to silicone or glue the buckets together. For this instance, I am not. If you have small children or pets that you run the risk of having this knocked over, I would absolutely silicone or super glue them together, that way you don't end up with water all over the floor. All right, so as you can see, it's pushing air through the airline tubing, which goes right into this bucket here. And voila, you have a, an air pump that doesn't require electricity, and when it stops uh, running, because it's gravity fed, you just flip the buckets over, and it'll restart the process from the other side. Emergency air pump with nothing but five gallon buckets and some airline tubing. All right guys, that does it for today's DIY project. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was interesting for me to build it and see that it actually works. And in the event of an emergency, this would be something really handy to have sitting around. As long as you don't have too many fish tanks. If you have one or two aquariums and you do this with a couple of two liter soda bottles, it would work great. If you have one and you just do it with the buckets, it'll work great. If you're like me and you have an entire fish room, however, it's not really plausible to go around and build bucket air, air pumps for every single one of your tanks. So I did buy a backup generator. Um, given the amount of money I have in fish and the importance of it in my life, I felt it only necessary. I live in central Pennsylvania where the winters can be pretty brutal, so I just wanted to be prepared for it in the event that I lose power. With this, I'll be able to maintain heat and air in the fish room as well as maintain you know, my refrigerators and heat in the house. I made sure I bought a generator that was capable of handling all of that. Um, I might not be able to play Xbox or watch Netflix, but the main and necessary systems in the house will stay running with the generator. But again, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I thought it was really cool that you could do this just using the power of gravity and a vacuum. But let me know down below if you liked it. Let me know down below you know, if you guys want to see more DIY stuff like this. It's been a while since I've done DIY projects, um, but this one was definitely one of my favorites. That's all for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, I will see you next time.